civil society organizations are very committed um, as a huge global uh, organization of platforms. And this year we've gathered here in Manila uh, to discuss ways of um, positioning ourselves in, uh, into, for, and through the work that we have committed as uh, representing peoples uh, in the SDGs. So um, since yesterday, we have um, discussed um, a lot um, of, um, of issues, um, ideas, way forwards, and um, key messages that we want to bring into um, this regional um, knowledge uh, activity um, on, on SDGs. Some of us are coming from extremely uh, marginalized groups where there are representatives of indigenous peoples, for example, that are invisible in the SDGs, whether at country level or at uh, HLPF level. There are also very strong advocates um, who, are, um, who, are, who have the voice already um, at the decision-making levels um, at, the, at the UN, for example, in the HLPF, or coordinating the process for the HLPF. So we're coming from different diverse um, backgrounds representing peoples, and I think what I must say, my, uh, my concern, um, because I represent the indigenous people's struggles, uh, from Borneo um, to Asia and to the globe, is that um, there are still a lot of people left behind, particularly indigenous peoples who are invisible in uh, international uh, outcome documents from the high-level political forms, such as the ministerial declaration, or even um, interventions from, uh, from other governments, from friendly governments of indigenous peoples who recognize indigenous peoples in their constitution, uh, in, their, in their laws, for example, have, um, have not yet spoken about uh, indigenous peoples, so leaving indigenous peoples still quite far behind. Well, um, in, in the context for Malaysia, see, Malaysia is a, is a federation of um, states. Um, where I come from, uh, in the Malaysian Borneo territory, uh, the governments are um, firstly autonomous. Yeah? And the decision making from government is two tier at the state level and at the federal central government level. So in our work um, on the rights uh, and participation of indigenous peoples at the national level towards the Sustainable Development Goals agenda, we have to navigate our way on two levels. That's number one. In order for us to mainstream um, our voices um, to the national context, because um, at the national level, uh, government supports um, a coalition of, uh, of CSOs, um, they are entitled the CSO for SDG Alliance, um, which um, until today, indigenous people still struggle to participate. Um, it's a very simple mathematical um, challenge. It's support resources for indigenous people's representatives from Sabah and Sarawak, which are the two uh, native states too to go to Kuala Lumpur, to participate in meetings, to, to have accommodation and to, to have a travel. So that hinders also the whole, the whole process um, unless if country and government commits to have dialogues in our part yeah. of Sabah and Sarawak. Yeah, that's right. And hence, it's also a matter of resource. But in terms of uh, participation, we have been participating um, very well. Um, in the SDGs, um, we helped uh, UNDP um, in their program called um, The Future We Want, mm -hmm. way back in 2015. And uh, indigenous peoples were uh, invited to a consultation for post-2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, were, we were very happy to provide um, our issues and uh, our statements, um, particularly uh, on indigenous peoples' uh, struggles and rights. But Malaysia is not just limited to indigenous peoples. There are migrants that need attention, women, people with disability, gentrification. There's also a um, high level of poverty in urban areas as well, such as the flat dwellers, um, as, as well as issues such as um, 
the rising uh, discrimination through uh, patriarchy, for example, which is found um, through, how, how, how should I say, um, through religious issues. That's, that's a growing trend in Malaysia. So if you look at Malaysia, you have the East Malaysian states, which major issues are indigenous people's issues. Mm -hmm. And these two states, you can find the most poverty, especially among the native population in throughout the whole Malaysia, along with the Orang Asli indigenous peoples um, in, uh, in Peninsula Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, data has shown that these are truly um, the target of, of government to alleviate the um, poverty of these peoples. Hence, a question that we can ask as civil society is, was the Millennium Development Goals truly effective on the part of the government? Maybe this time in the Sustainable Development Goals, there should be more participation of communities in defining indicators, in defining methods of um, monitoring and evaluating the data mm -hmm. and in the implementations of the SDGs itself. Um, where we are right now, uh, at the regional level, these are the things that CSOs want to be asking as key questions. I just had a discussion with the Malaysian government representatives, and when I ask about their approach um, or their or their thinking around um, bringing people together, see Malaysia is heading into a, becoming a developing country. Um, capital is an economic model. Um, it does have a federal capitalist mechanism or uh, a model. So I think if Malaysia is going to be a progressing and a developed country by 2020, nobody must be left behind. Hence, capacity is really required right now um, for all, all people's sectors. I'm talking about governments, I am talking about the agencies at the ministry level, at the district level, at, or even at the customary level at the villages. Mm -hmm. In parallel also, private sector also really needs the capacity uh, to develop a mindset, to develop a rationale mm -hmm. on how to participate well in the context of uh, Malaysia being a developing country where natural resources, lands, for example, um, resources of the sea uh, and the forests are, are taken care of and um, defended by local, local communities. So what I'm trying to say is all the, all the people that I've mentioned, these communities that I mentioned, really need the uh, capacity uh, development support from UNDP. And um, uh, fortunately, um, the UNDP team in Malaysia is also working very hard um, in terms of um, in, uh, engaging. However, I think it takes uh, two to tango, as they say. Uh, CSOs um, should um, respond uh, to UNDP uh, in terms of providing our angle mm -hmm. of best addressing uh, the challenges. At, at the same time, um, government should also be, uh, through UNDP, speaking to civil society, mm -hmm. speaking to indigenous peoples. I think in that context, Malaysia can progress well in the SDGs mm -hmm. after having been uh, in the VNR uh, in the second round. Um, and that opportunity in the VNR gave myself and two other CSO representatives to have a discussion um, with the minister representing Malaysia. And uh, he happens to be from East Malaysia. And he does know the context of uh, indigenous people. So through that, we hope um, that government can look at uh, civil society not as, um, not as a, how you say, uh, because in, in, in Malaysia, civil society are also considered as non-friendly mm -hmm. to government. Government does say that. Um, however, I'm looking at positive uh, aspects. CSOs must be able to be given the role to facilitate the voices uh, of, of the community. With the partnership of UNDP, um, I think we can bring all these uh, sub sectors uh, into a 
multi-stakeholder engagement platform um, at country level in Malaysia, and UNDP can play that role. Here in, uh, in, uh, in Manila, there's already a discussion around that. Uh, CSOs are talking about that, and there's going to be some discussions later. It's going to be on session four, so um, the governments are here, and I'm sure they want to hear the CSO perspective as well, apart from delivering their key messages on how they see multi-stakeholder engagement and partnerships is all about. Well, UNDP organized the post-2015 process um, leading towards the final high-level meeting on strengthening public institutions and building inclusive societies. So Indigenous Peoples' representative was, um, was invited or, or was delegated to the meeting in Moldova, Chisinau, where we gave our perspective on how to have um, inclusive processes. And there, to the governments of the North, we explained that... Um, to have indigenous peoples or the marginalized um, included in development plans or uh, poverty reduction, they must be at the table and um, they actually must need to be supported to travel to where the meeting places are because that's the, actu the actual basic fundamentals of the declarations of the rights of indigenous peoples is to give free prior and informed consent where communities can be represented to come to a high level meeting or where government or UNDP de development partners will go to the community and address the whole community. There are two ways of it. So we explain that um, uh, in, uh, in, in Moldova. So that's pr uh, one prime example on how UNDP has uh, supported the participation of uh, indigenous peoples um, uh, until today. However, what still remains is the indigenous peoples, as I mentioned earlier on, are among the many uh, marginalized communities that are still invisible in the sustainable development goals. And I think we all can work together and find, uh, find the recognition of the spaces um, for, for all of them. And for the indigenous peoples um, out there and uh, to friends of indigenous peoples, to the government watching, uh, to the UN agencies, let me just drop it like this. Here's the message. My second verse is gonna get tougher. My game plans changed cause times got rougher. Open your mind, focus your attention. I gotta mention some complication about the tribal kids in my tribal nation. They walk five miles for the education. They go to school with blistered feet. Some got no food and no food to eat. The rainforest is dying, it's gone forever. Logging and corruption destroyed it together. Illegal logs stored in illegal shipyards just wait to be sold like illegal macards. But I flow with the rhythms of the SDG. To the people of the world, we got unity. Atama in the house and I represent my people of Borneo. Long live indigenous people. Long live sustainable development goals. 